Hi guys, happy Monday. Okay, so it's been a week since I saw Father T. This was the third visit to Father T for deliverance prayers. And um, we met in the church. We, the, the weather did not fail us this time. We, uh, we were able to meet at the church. He gave me the sacrament. He gave me, uh, first we started with confession. I actually had went to confession Saturday so Sunday, Monday, that was my second confession, uh, face to face with Father T. And then um, we went through the sacraments. He gave me um, the Holy Eucharist and he gave me, um, he anointed my, my, he anointed me with oil and he prayed over me. And then I went home and did some more prayers that you do the deliverance prayers for the laity alone. So um, it was a hard week. I, it was a beautiful day. I got home and I, wow, they, I don't know if they just amped up on the attacking me at that night, but I, I couldn't sleep. I was, I don't think I really slept until like the following Wednesday. Um, just being attacked, just, Wow, I, I if I could even explain, it feels like someone else is in your skeleton moving so that your bones. Oh, I, I just I I can't even explain how this feels. All I know is it's so extremely painful that it's I mean my poor, I, like I said, poor Octavia, I feel so bad for her when she knows it's going to happen before I even know I could sense it starting. And then my bone, my body, first, my body starts going into like a spaz. It, the bones and the muscles start moving. Like there's something inside them. It's so crazy. I can't even explain it. I mean, I haven't even told a counselor this. What am I supposed to tell them? I've called a few times to set up a counseling appointment, but it's like, I mean, do you really want to give this person this information when, if they're not spiritual, if they don't believe in God, they might as well just lock me up now. Because if you don't believe in God, you're not going to ever believe anything that's going on right now. So then it got stranger. I finished all the holy water from the Epiphany um, the Epiphany Holy Water that my friend gave me from San Francisco, from one of the chapels in San Francisco. And then I picked up some more holy water from my church on Saturday. I go, when I go on Saturday or Sunday, actually, I went Sunday this month, week. I confused myself. Um, and I filled up my little water bottle and I drank, I drank a good part of it, drinking it. Seems like um, if you if you know any kind of oppression with demonic, it can come out of any orifice. <laughs> you can yawn it out. You can cough it out. You can you can crap it out. So it does seem like when I do drink the holy water, it kind of goes through me and something comes out. So um, you can fart it out. You can you know you can laugh it out. I mean, you know, <laughs> don't be surprised. Uh, another energy flew in my ear again. I don't know what this energy is. Gosh, it just, and then it just comes in my ear and it'll start clicking, click, click, click. So I put a little holy water in it. You know, I'm not like pouring the holy water in my ear. I just put a little drop and just kind of let it sit in there and do the sign of the cross on it and do some more prayers. Prayers really, really help. The Latin prayers are amazing. As soon as you feel any pain, give it to the Lord offer it I offer this I'm you know I'm I'm in tears tears are rolling down my eyes and I can't even breathe I'm ready to pass out from the pain it's so excruciating and uh I just say Lord it's yours please do not waste this pain on me give it to you know for for my sins for the, for the reparations of my sins for all sinners everywhere or for anyone who needs your mercy, Father. 
So then things started getting a little, little calmer towards the end of the week. I've been applying for jobs like crazy. We know my situation, so I have limited sources. I cannot drive. I gave my car to my son. He needed it more than I did. And, um, you know, this weekend I found myself getting job letters saying, hey, you know, why don't you apply to this one? Well, it's in, it's in a different town and I don't have the car to do that. So um, I'm, I'm applying to what I can right now. The Lord, it's in the Lord's hands. I give it to the Lord. I try not to fuss too much. I'm not sitting here on my behind going, okay, well, I'm just gonna let the Lord do everything. No, I, I'm, I'm putting it in his hands. It means that whatever, it's not my job loss, it's his job loss. It's not my body pain, it's his body pain. So I just give it all to him. And I'm telling you, you do that and you sleep better, you think better, the body pain moves, it, it, it does disappear. But there is still something in my body blocking me from living my life. And when this happens, that means I spend more time thinking about myself than the Lord. And that's, that's another, that's a sin in itself. I'm not here for me. I'm not here for me. Okay. So anyway, so I thought, okay, well, I have some blogs. I want to finish this one blog. I've been trying to finish for two or three weeks is just getting out of hand. It's just too long. And it's now it's almost a, it's almost a small book. And uh, I'm thinking that maybe I should just finish it as a book, but it is out of what, what is this one? Is it out of the darkness to Jesus Christ? A testimony? I don't know. I'd have to go look on my titles, whatever. So let's get towards the end of the week. I started, you know, I've been asking the Lord where this curse is coming from. I don't think it's an ancestral curse. And uh, the more, the more I've been asking the Lord about it, you know, give me some kind of sign if it's something that I can change, if it's something that I can do, I think I've mentioned before about the woman who was buried in our, our, the house in the, in the yard that I grew up in. We had uh, three quarters of an acre. My dad was a carpenter and he was building on the home. And when he dug up part of the land to uh, put the foundation, we found all of her belongings. So instead of leaving in there, stupid us, we kept them. We kept a lot of the things because a lot of them were antiques. I, I have thrown away personally two of the items in my home in the last year. One of them was a black sky ring bowl. So if you pull, if you put it up to the light, if you put it up to the sun, it's it's a it's it's like a translucent purple. It is it was white glass at one time, and now it is black glass. You know, if you know about depression glass, that's you know it can turn green. Well, we had green glass too. My concern is my brother has a lot of this stuff at his home, and he's very oppressed. I I, you know, we haven't spoken in over a year. I've been praying for him so much, but um, I think this curse is from the woman whose belongings were buried in that yard and those items were cursed. So this is nothing messed around with people. So how do I know that I think I'm almost 100% sure where this curse is coming from now? Because when I was typing it in the blog explaining about the witch, I did not think she was a witch, but the things we found were very occulty, witchy things like the sky ring bowl, never really thought about it. I really didn't even know about what it was until a few years ago when I was doing some research on eBay for um, looking for items maybe to sell. I'm not selling that, I threw it out. I hope it broke. I told my son to just throw it as hard as he can into the garbage so it would break. You know, I mean, I... We did not think, we thought those were innocent things. We thought that things buried in a yard, you know, the rumor was that she had an affair. The husband hated her. We, we, we just did not think about any of that. We did not bless the items. There was an old phone in there, an old box phone, the ones that you used to crank. It was wooden. 
and there were termites eating that away. And my dad wanted to refurbish it. I don't know what happened to that. I think they still had it. They kept all these things. And because the reason I'm saying this, this is when things started happening in my home, in our home, when we moved, but it was actually after my dad dug up all those belongings. The rumor had it that he buried her in the yard. She was not with the belongings, but my mom had a medium friend come over, um, which probably did not, definitely did not help our situation because when you have a medium open up things, that opens you up to the diabolical. It opens you up to the spirit world. We're not, the spirit world is with us. It, it is with us. Believe me, I feel it every single freaking day of my life. But it doesn't mean that we have to associate with it. We are not supposed to be. If I feel and sense a presence, I just tell the Lord to bring it home. Just go home with it and pray and do a Hail Mary, a, our Father, and glory be. Well, Friday, actually it was Saturday because it happened twice Saturday. So this is the first time that I, I mean, this is this, I have not been scared like this since the dragon like ran around my room in probably like 2006, 2007. That scared the hell out of me and my cat. That's a story in itself. I know I've mentioned that story before, but that might've been eyes of an empath and not eyes of a messenger when I was still dabbling into new age. Um, so I'm writing out this blog. I'm explaining after I turned eight years old is when my spiritual life with the Lord was beginning to change. And I was starting to dabble into astrology, witchcraft, numerology. These things started coming to my mind. Like I knew them, like they were secondhand to me. And I did, I, I didn't, I didn't really question that. I, and then all of a sudden I wanted my dad, I, I was asking my dad if I could get a cat. I always, we always had dogs. I had a hamster. I loved animals, but a cat wasn't something that we ever had. And I actually have had cats ever since until Drake died, my black cat, the only black cat I ever had. That, another story in itself. And um, then I have Octavia, the dog, and Octavia and Drake. Drake was terrified of Octavia. They didn't get along ever. Um, he didn't really bother with Augustus, but Octavia and him, there was just something about them together they did not agree with. So um, I'm rambling on with this. I just, I, I didn't really think that cats were associated. I'm not saying cats are demonic at all. I'm not saying that but I'm not sure what I'm saying about cats because we still have Phoenix and we love Phoenix and there's a cat out in my front yard too. But um, just on with the story, I'm finishing the blog and I'm starting to type out that the woman in the house who occupied, there was a spirit who occupied the house. I always knew that. And I continued to tell my parents that she lived, she seemed to occupy the space in my closet which was a walk-in closet when my dad rebuilt the house and that it was attached to the attic. And it was always something that there was a presence in there that always bothered me. And this is when I started having leg problems. The problems that I'm having now, I'm realizing the pains that were going down from my knees down started in that house. I just thought they were groin pains. But coming back to now, having the same exact sensations and feeling a presence on me. I really definitely am not, it's not a coincidence at all because that's when everything, I, I started coming to this darkness that I loved. I loved the darkness. That's not, that wasn't me. I, that's when I started wanting to do anything with scary books, anything scary, anything, like I said, a cultish and witchy. So I typed in, I believe that this woman was a witch. And all of a sudden behind me, I hear this hissing sound that scared the holy hell out of me. And a loud voice in my left ear that yelled at me. Whoa, that scared the F out of me. I got the holy water. I blessed myself. 
I threw the holy water in the house, in the room. I, I started speaking in Latin. I was actually a little terrified and a chill went up and down my spine. I was not happy. So trying to, and the thing is, why? The dogs didn't even respond. That bugs the F out of me. Why? So then later my son came home from work. I started talking again. He was sitting in my chair where it happened. And I was sitting on the bed in my bedroom. He heard the hissing again. I started speaking about something in, in the demonic, something, something to do with whatever I was working on with the, with the blog. And he hissing and Derek even looks up and he was like, what? Didn't scare him. But I asked him, I'm like, did, what, what did you just hear? He said, that was hissing. I'm like, thank you so much. That is demonic. I'm just letting you know now. I'm warning you now. Because he doesn't believe any of this shit. He don't believe nothing. He thinks his mom is batshit crazy, kind of, sort of. I'm different. He knows I'm different. But he knows that I've never been like a normal. I'm like, why can't I just be normal? I can't even not walk normal, right? No, I got to get on a scooter and sit on this this walker backwards. Well, I guess since they threw me off the walker in, now it's May, a couple months ago, they started throwing me off the walker before Easter. Um, now I'm getting shocked. The walker is shocking me everywhere I go. Yeah, you could say it's got plastic wheels and I'm on, um, I'm on carpet. You know what? This just ain't normal, people. I can see it glowing in the dark at night, just like my sheets do. I'll get shocked by my sheets. So that is a lot of energy running through me. And if I get angry, luckily, I don't get angry the way that I did before. When I, I, I mean, I think, excuse me, I think there's been other energies that have been taken out of me. This isn't the only energy that's been around. So, um, so yeah, now the hissing, I haven't told the Father T about that yet. I saw him yesterday at church, but just briefly, you know, when I was driving up there with my mobility scooter and he was out talking with a few of the uh, parishioners. And I just said, you know, just hi. And I just went in to mass. Um, but I'll, you know, I'll let him, I'll leave him a note on this. But so that's what the blog is about. The blog is about how the demonic can take over in our lives, even an innocent child's life, thinking that you're just doing innocent things but this, this isn't what this world is geared towards. It is geared towards failure. Unless you've got, you have to have a very, very strong sense of integrity and a sense of right and wrong, which is integrity. I mean, all I have to, all I, I just read, read the Bible, read Deuteronomy, read what the Lord says. He wants no sacrifices. That's why he sent Jesus. Jesus was the last lamb. Jesus was the last human sacrifice. But that's not what this world is geared towards. It is death and destruction. And death and destruction is from the fallen one. It is not from God. God is love and life. Life, the giver of life, not death. So until we believe this, until we realize this, we're not going to get any, any better. So um, whoever, whomever is doing the Latin um, prayers, keep, keep it up. And you can't just do Latin prayers. You have to stop doing whatever the diabolical. You, if, I'm telling you, if you're having sex and you're not married, if you're masturbating, if that is a sin, this is of the flesh. This world is flesh and money. That's what I call it. The Lord is spirit and love and life and light. We don't need this flesh. This flesh is not ours. This is from this fallen world. And I mean, once, I mean, gosh, once I found that out, it's like, I'll do everything in my power to not ever. And the only time that I have some kind of weird 
um, like thought, like a sexual thought is in a nightmare, in a dream. And that is not, that is a diabolical trying to infiltrate me again. And that's not going to happen. Now I just have to stop feeling the pain or at least acknowledging the pain. They love that. They want me to be in pain. They want me to cry out in pain. So I try, I try when that, when the pain, it, 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 it feels like a knife, a, a long, long ass dagger going through my thigh is what it is. And it's the right side. And then it'll move down that it, it actually feels like it's dislocated all of my bones, every single bone in my body from the waist down. And I can even move, hold my kneecap and feel it. I can move my bones to relief it, you know, for some release of relief of it. But anyway, Matthew 7, 7, all you have to do is ask and the Lord will go, he will show you. You seek, find, you knock and that door will be open to you. But you have to have the faith in the Lord to do it. I'm telling you, I'm a work in progress and I'm not gonna stop. I will not give up, ever. Especially now that the Lord showed me all the truth I need. Okay, so so that's that. And if you if you are if you're if you are a Catholic that has been baptized and you do not practice your faith and you were in chronic pain, the doctors told you that you have it's always it's fibromyalgia. It's arthritis of any kind, anything, a physical, physical pain. Check, check in with yourself. Where are you? Where are you spiritually? Where are you in your faith? Where are you with the holy sacraments? We need those. We need the church for protection. If you are not praying every day, if you don't have that holy rosary in your hand, you need it. I'm telling you. I am telling you everything that I did wrong and I'm learning from it. So I got to go and try to finish this dang blog. And I have not heard hissing since Saturday. I've thrown holy water and everything. And the thing is, the dogs did not hear it. They were both in the room sleeping when Derek and I were in here talking and neither one of them responded. So that explained that to me too. That's a little weird. So, all right. Have a blessed week. Everyone who's hurting, if you're hurting, if you need someone to help you pray, if you need someone to pray over you, just send me an email, please. Don't, don't feel bad for asking for help for prayers. I've actually even offered, I've even been asking a few of my friends, please, please pray for me. You know, I even asked Father T, can, would you pray over me, Father? We, people do it all the time. And I pray for him too. I don't stand there and pray over him with my hands. You know, but he doesn't need to know that. He knows that I pray for him. So we just have to get out of this fallen world. We are going to have the thousand years on heaven and earth, but it's up to us. It's up to God's children to do that. We can't just keep they saying that this is all fun and games anymore. And, oh, that's funny. That guy looks like a demon. Oh, oh gosh, that's so funny. Actually, it's not funny anymore. And I was one that thought, oh, geez, that's, that's just kind of funny. No, no, no. It's reality. And they just want to desensitize us from it. All right. So let's do. Um, let us do. Let's always do the St. Michael prayer. St. Michael is a good one to always pray. And you should always be praying to your guardian angel every single day. So, okay, let's just do that one. Angel of God, my guardian dear, to whom God's love commits me here, ever this day be at my side, to light, to guard, to rule and guide. And then we give you seven Hail Marys, I'm sorry, <laughs> seven glory bees for our guardian angels every morning. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. And since I haven't been counting, I'm going to do one more. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, a world without end. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael. St. Michael, the archangel, please defend us in battle and be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. And may God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the heavenly host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits who prowl around this world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. God bless every single one of you. Every single day. Bye-bye.